Hello everyone, I am Mr. Indigo, and welcome back to Song of the Deep Part 6. Today we're going to be li doing whatever we left off, I can't remember because stuff, I guess. Mmm, delicious. Sometimes when the lock is rusted shut, the, bur 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 the clock can pick up bombs. Don't know if you know that. Be sure because you're an idiot. I'm at the deep light. Yeah, this, this game kind of defies the laws of actual physics, but I love it anyway. So, yeah. Okay, let's see here. What, what, what was I doing? Let's see here. I got that. Right, I was heading up here. Oh my god, I can't believe how fast this submarine goes. As Merrin connected the final beam, the entire tower began to vibrate with a powerful hum. A massive blast of sound shot out from the top of the tower. Merrin was left dizzy and shaken from the blast. Was the deep light some kind of giant sonar beacon? If so, what had it been used for? With a terrible sinking feeling, she realized she already knew the answer. Deep light had been used to hunt the marrows. The tower's sonar pulse had revealed a new location to her. Hey, I got an now she wanted to ensure it would never be activated again. The only way to be sure was to remove the sonar emitter. Emit a sonar ping to reveal hidden paths and in interactable objects. Marin yanked the emitter out of the deep light. The hum of the tower fell silent. She bolted the emitter into the roof of the sub. Maybe she could find a way to put it to good use. Ah, oh, sweet. Sweet baby Jesus. There's more stuff in here, I know there is. The problem is, is finding it. Cause I'm not gonna leave the deep light without getting all this stuff. Obviously, that's a hull fragment. I can do without them, I 
I guess. I had like a mini sonar that I could use, I guess. But I don't, so yay. Sweet, I got fifty dollars. Whee! What time is it anyway? Shit, son. I'm stuck. I am stuck. Yay. Oh wait, I was already over there? Weird camera. Thought I was doing something wrong for like two minutes. Marin had marked her map when she saw the deep light's pulse. She was certain it must be the location of her father's boat. Go all the way down there? <sighs> okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Don't be a douchebag. That'd be nice. What's up here? Tiny extractor. Ooh. That's nice. Like gold, I need I need gold and stuff. That's always important. Gold's always important. Sometimes. Sometimes it's not, you know? Like Oh man. Oh yeah, baby cheeks. budging for me. I could probably get through there if I was careful. And quick. Treasure. Yay. Thank you, little guys. <laughs> I don't think that's how you're supposed to do it, but okay, that works too. 
Works for me. Oh shit. Go up here, save my game, and then stuff happens. Yay! Hi, old guy. You look old, but I'm not gonna say that to your face. Oh, wait, I already did. Whoops! Oh well, he'll get over it. Obviously, something is amiss here. I realize that they don't really react to me. They react to the submarine, or... Well, they act, react to me. They're, mo they're mainly reacting to me. So that's a thing. Bet you guys a hundred dollars that the end of the game is near. God, I keep forgetting what keys are which keys. Oh, money. Ten dollars. Woo! I collected fifty-two out of two hundred nine art of our treasures. Last digit 10 to attack the to attack the deep light and they did deactivate it but only one survived oh, that is so depressing so sad too I 
look inside your head. As Marin approached the gate of the Forbidden City, the clockwork seahorse warned her to stay away. But she had come this far and would not turn back, regardless of the danger that lay ahead. Oh man, she's a feisty. As the gate to the city opened, Marin was ambushed by Fomori sentinels. Before she could react, they launched their torpedoes at the defenseless clockwork seahorse. Marin watched in horror as its gleaming golden body was blasted into pieces that fell, lifeless and dull, to the sea floor. Blinded by rage, Marin turned back to face the deadly sentinels. Boom! Oh crap, the treasure's in there. This is the final stretch of the game. No. I was having so much fun playing this game. Okay, Sonar doesn't take them off. Good, suck all my energy. <laughs> oh, that sounded weird. You don't have any fool on me. You're for use. For Mori, whatever the hell you're called. Sentinels. Fifty dollars. Aw, oh, yeah. Can't get this stuff. God, why can't I get it? Nothing.
The forbidden city of the Fomori glistened with immeasurable riches. This was the lost city of gold from her father's songs. But where were the Fomori? They all died in an earthquake. Just like the Atlantean people. Essentially. Listen, I know history's dark, but that's pretty much history for you. If, ever, if anybody's ever taken a history class. Like, you'll know that we, we, we treated the Native Americans like crap in, in this country. The Quite heart of the Forbidden it. City lay behind two enormous, impassable gates. They were sturdy enough to withstand the strongest creatures of the sea. Marin was reminded of something her father once told her. When a problem seems unsolvable, approach it from another direction. So essentially go around it and find a way through the damn thing, you know. Obviously he doesn't swear, but you know, you know like good fathers don't usually do. This control scheme is really weird. Got my treasure though. I bet you a hundred bucks there's a sonar thing that you have to go through. Oh, I found a work gate. Or pine vortex, whatever it's called. Oh, I bet you a hundred bucks when I go up here, I'm gonna find another item. Ooh, is that electricity? Ooh. Up above the heart of the city lay the munitions factories. The weapon stockpiles were stacked in endless columns, awaiting a war that never came. Whatever had become of the Fomori, it must have been sudden and unexpected. Obviously they got their ass handed to them by the marrow. God, it's so good. Oh, this game, I love it. I love it so. Oh, it's a pulse light. Like, why am I being pushed all around? And then I realized, and then I, when I realized it was a pulse light, I'm like, that makes sense. I don't know. I have my own brand of stupidity. Just really upgrade this torpedo. Despite its cold and ruthless nature, Fomori weaponry was sometimes quite beautiful. Even their deadly, round warheads pulsed with a mesmerizing glow. Yeah, we all know the Fomori suck, but... Fomori warheads were designed to trigger on sound or light. They were sturdy enough to be pushed around but a single sonar pulse or a strong beam would activate the detonator. Like, what do I need to do? Oh, shit. Strange to think that all these bombs are in the background. The vast riches and ever turning gears of the Forbidden City came with their own cost. 
poisonous black soot poured out in unending columns, gradually filtering its way into every part of the sea. So essentially the Fomori were kind of ass kind of an ass were kind of a bunch of assholes. And why is this factory still running? Like it doesn't make much sense. Why would you still run an like an ancient factory when your people are pretty much extinct? You know? Like, doesn't make much sense. Does it? Sound like us, kinda. Oh my gosh. I can't even see. Um, I like deactivated or something. Sorry about that audible silence, okay? I was just... I had an argument. No, I gotta get through. I'm gonna have to end this episode here, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, make sure to give a big up. And if you. See you guys in the next episode. Ciao.